Hey you guys, meet Dolly. This is Dolly. And she is gonna go to a new home soon. I'm so excited. Let me tell you the story of Dolly. Dolly is Adeline's baby. I started all my rabbits with Adeline, and um, which is great. She's the matriarch of my herd. I still have her. You might have seen her babies a couple weeks ago. But um, Dolly, unfortunately, she is only half pedigreed because Adeline is a pedigreed rabbit. But I didn't have a buck. A, bo a bobcat killed my buck one time. Literally scared him to death around Christmas time. So I had to drive copious amounts of miles to get a new buck and wasn't even pedigreed because champagnes are pretty rare around here. They're getting a little bit more established, but they were pretty rare at the time. So her dad wasn't pedigreed. So let me show you what a pedigree is. This is one of my pedigrees. And what it is, it's, it's a lineage of the rabbit. It shows the rabbit's parents, its grandparents, and its great-grandparents, so three generations. And um, why, why do you want a pedigree? Well, I want a pedigree because, first of all, a couple reasons. First of all, it tells me who the rabbit's related to. That way, I can always go back if I don't remember you know, who, who the parents were. When, I'm, when breeding time comes around, I want to be able to just be assured that I'm making some good selections. And then another reason is because I live in the big city of Dallas, so I have a big market for Champagne d'Argent's. Um, kids like to show them for uh, Future Farm of America and uh, 4-H. So they want those pedigrees. Their instructors tell them to get the pedigrees just so they're assured that it's a full bred rabbit because um, you know they don't want to show a rabbit that's not full bred. So, that's another reason and it will bring a higher price in the market if you have a rabbit that has a pedigree that you're selling because it just assures people they're getting a full breed so dolly only has a pedigree for her mother's side her father's side doesn't have any pedigree so she's only half pedigree so what i did with her was i made my own pedigree so you can do that if you start out with non-pedigree stock you can do that it just takes about three generations so it's going to take a little while so what i did was each time she had a litter i saved a baby recorded the information about the parents then when that rabbit had a baby i recorded the information again until i had three generations recorded and made my own pedigree so i just want to tell you that, that that you can do that if you don't have pedigree stock you know it's possible so anyway so i don't need dolly any longer so, because she's only half pedigreed, so I really can't sell her babies for very much, very easily. So, I was kind of in a quandary because I've had her for a long time. She's not the sweetest rabbit, but I've gotten, I've gotten attached to her. So, I was just kind of putting off taking her out of my herd. And then a friend of mine called me, my friend that sold me Nugget. Remember Nugget, the smallest champagne rabbit ever known? Yeah, he just never grew. Sorry, Nugget. I know. So the sweet little girl that I got uh, Nugget from, well, young lady that I got Nugget from, they called me and they said, do you have any big bucks? Because we're, we're getting really small rabbits. And I said, yeah, I know. I was about to call you and tell you that Nugget really never grew. So um, definitely... Not a good addition to a meat rabbit herd. So anyway, we are going to get Dolly and my biggest buck buddy together. And we are going to make some big rabbits for this girl. And then she can breed them out and make a pedigree for them. And hopefully end up with a much bigger Champagne d'Argent that's going to show on the table. Because this young lady is showing her rabbits and they are not even the class weight that they need to be to show in the adult in the adult range so she really needs some bigger stock so that is great so i'd love to help out a friend and then of course once they get that that breeding done they're going to throw me a buck <laughs> a big one that's 
a little bigger than nugget. So that'll be awesome. And that kind of brings me to one thing about this year. I've been praying, what's this year going to be about? Like, what's my word? Um, what's the theme of this year? And the Lord keeps saying community. And I, I think that's true. I need a community of homesteaders, not only in my area, but online. So I thank all of you for coming around me. I love your comments. I feel like I'm part of a community now. Um, but I also want to interview some people in my area in Dallas. Um, different people are doing different exciting things. So, um, and I want to keep reaching out to people online, maybe visit some different homesteads and kind of get to know how they do things and meet them. I just want to make a community. So that's what this year is going to be about. So right now I'm going to get Dolly out. She is really hard to get out of her cage. Um, and then I'm going to breed her with Buddy this morning since it's going to be a pretty day. It's going to be a pretty day to sit out here and watch. And I really hope everything goes well pretty quickly because I do have school to teach <laughs> in just, oh, about half an hour. <laughs> so, all right, the birds are beautiful this morning. Everything thinks it's springtime, but it's not. Yeah, uh, Saturday, it's gonna dip into the teens for a few days. So yeah, everything's gonna get a shock. That is kind of what it is living in Dallas. It's shocking sometimes, <laughs> but I'm not complaining. I'll take a pretty day. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Dolly is not my nicest rabbit and she's really hard to get out of this cage. So I'm really glad she's going to go to another home because I like to get my rabbits out a lot in exercise pens. I really don't like to have them in cages all the time. So yay. So let's get her out and get her bread. Wish me luck guys. Princess, maybe you should try to get her out. Last time you did really good. Huh? I can. Here. You want to? <laughs> That's terrible. I can't do something. So I was like, oh, I'll give it to my daughter. <laughs> but you have a gift with her. I don't know what it is. She's a big mama. Here, let me try. No, no, I got this. Are you sure? I don't want her to scratch you up. I've got, the, I've got long sleeves on. Okay. okay. Oh. I've got to get her to the front of the cage. Oh, hang on to her. But don't get scratched. <laughs> <clears throat> Just take her to that pen. Right there. Okay, let's go get Buddy. This is why I like cages that have an opening at the top. They're so much easier to get out the rabbit. Hey, Buddy. Wanna have, have some fun today? See how much easier that was? All right, buddy, good luck. Dolly is not the easiest to breed either. <laughs> Woo! Good job, buddy. Now with Adeline, I have to watch out for Buddy because she's pretty aggressive. So, um, yeah, you saw me like getting him off when he, he was on the wrong end, which he's just showing dominance, but she could bite him. Nah, mm hmm Yep. <laughs> yep, you're thinking what I'm thinking. That would be bad, so I'm not going to lose my best buck on this situation. <laughs> I don't mind helping friends, but uh, no, that's not happening to Buddy. Now, since everything was successful, I'm gonna take Buddy out, put him back in his cage, and then I'll bring him out later on to mate again with um, Dolly. That way she'll have a bigger litter because like I said before in another video, the rabbit's eggs come down during the act of mating or with the act of mating. And so there'll be more eggs later on in the afternoon and we'll try again 
so we can get the biggest litter possible for my friend Cheyenne. So I'm so excited about that. Helping out friends community.